a soggy Saturday evening in Statesboro, but the fans not going anywhere. The Georgia Southern Eagles welcome in their first ever FBS opponent to Paulson Stadium. The Western Michigan Broncos taking on the Eagles next. Western Michigan comes marching into Statesboro as the Broncos representing the Mid-American Conference in their first ever meeting with the Georgia Southern Eagles, the reigning Sun Belt champions. Hi all and welcome, I'm Tiffany Green with the former Tulane and NFL cornerback Curtis Bayham. Now, both of these teams coming off of losses in week one to Power Five conferences, Georgia Southern and Western Michigan pretty evenly matched. Broncos like to pass it, Eagles prefer the ground game. What can we expect from tonight's matchup? You know, Tiffany, I'm calling this rebound weekend. Both teams lost to FBS schools last week, but Western Michigan today, they have dynamic players all over the offensive side of the ball. But ironically, last weekend, a defensive player, Darius Phillips, was the one that made big plays against Michigan State. This guy's a corner, had 185 yards in receiving, catching kickoffs, all of that good stuff last weekend. I'm anxious to see if he'll be able to set up good field position for Western Michigan today. Well, after week one, he is the best kick returner in the country. On the other side for the Georgia Southern Eagles, I think everyone knows this. They love to run the football. They had the best rushing attack in the FBS last season with 381 yards per game. Now they're led by their top returning rusher and Matt Breida. Breida is a very unique running back. Coaches tell us he runs a 4 3 5 40. He has to be able to get the tough yards today. And when I say tough yards, when it's fourth and two, Breeder needs to be able to make that play. We know he can run between the tackles, catch passes out the backfield. If he's able to do some of those things today, he can take pressure off of the quarterback who didn't play particularly well last week. They need to put it on Breeder's shoulder and let him carry that load again this game. So it's the Broncos from Western Michigan and the Georgia Southern Eagles ready to kick things off here from Paulson Stadium. This place is going to be rocking. You got to come back. Welcome into Paulson Stadium on the campus of Georgia Southern University. The Eagles welcome in Western Michigan who made the long trek from Kalamazoo. Now the rain blanketed the field just before kickoff, but the kickoff conditions are now ideal. Overcast skies, and this is the first meeting between these two teams. Georgia Southern is one and one all time against Mid-American Conference opponents. Good look there at P.J. Fleck, the youngest coach in the FBS at 34 years old. Third year at Western Michigan. Done a terrific job turning this program around. Just one win in his first season back in 2003. A seven-point turnaround, or rather win turnaround. And they got eight last year on the other sideline. The very experienced Willie Fritz. Second year with the Eagles, but 23rd overall. Came from Sam Houston State. And in his first season in the FBS and with this Georgia Southern program, they are the 2014 Sun Belt champions. A lot of experience on the sideline for the Eagles with their head coach, Willie Fritz. So as I mentioned, the rain came down, a little lightning delay. Players didn't get onto the field until about five o'clock. But I don't think that really matters because everybody's ready to play right now. Home opener here for Georgia Southern. Every time you come to Statesboro, the atmosphere is always electric and it's no different today. These fans were not going to let a little rain stop them today. Electric atmosphere, it's time for some football. I'm anxious to see how this field will hold up with the amount of rain that we just had.
And we get things started here. Darius Phillips not going anywhere. Georgia Southern all over. Johnny on the spot. And Georgia Southern is making sure that Darius don't have the type of game he had last week against Michigan State. They were prepared for that kickoff. They were down inside the 10. Darius had no shot just now. So quarterback Zach Terrell comes on to the field as Chris De La Rosa out of Altamont Springs, Florida with the big tackle to open things up. Terrell behind center and shotgun, number 11 in white. Redshirt Jr. out of Fort Wayne, Indiana. Second team all Mac last year. They hand it off to Jarbion Franklin, the workhorse for this Broncos defense. And I'm looking for Jarvion Franklin to have a big game today. He struggled last week against a superior Michigan State team, but he feels like he can run between the tackles today and make some plays. And his offensive line is going to give him that opportunity. Second down, and it looked like there was some movement up front early on from the Broncos. Could be on John Kenoy. The true freshman center out of Kentwood, Michigan. So, Charles Lewis, referee making that announcement, and it was Kenoy. Marching back five yards and replay second down. Terrell last week had a career high in completions and attempts as Braverman off to the right and stuffed by the Eagles defense. Matt Dobson making some noise up in there and we expect to see him make an impact for the Georgia Southern Eagles. Yes, and Matt Dobson had a really nice game last week against West Virginia. Uh, he had nine or 10 tackles. He was all over the field. He's the common influence that that secondary needs. He's, taught, he's started 24 games. He knows how to play football, and that just showed. He, he's going to be all over the field today. Third and eight now for the Broncos. Braverman over to the right, completes the pass, and trying to lunge ahead for the first down is Carrington Thompson. We'll see if he picks up the first down and does so. So we talked about the impact of Matt Dobson. Also on that defense, Antoine Williams had a big week last week against West Virginia. Yes, and Antoine Williams, the coaches speak very highly of him. He has NFL talent. You will see him sideline to sideline today. And then the slot for the Broncos, also the wide out in Corey Davis. Corey Davis is a dynamic wide receiver. That's their go-to guy. Um, 1,400 yards last season, 15 touchdowns, even had a really good game against Michigan State. I'm looking for him to be a difference maker on the outside today. He runs very good routes, intermediate and deep. Look for him to be Zach's favorite target during the process of this game today. Ball at the 25-yard line, second and five. Terrell takes the snap, hands it off to Franklin. Franklin with running room, lunges ahead, first down. Tackled by Antonio Glover, Jarvion Franklin. He did not practice for a couple of days this week because of concussion-like symptoms after that Michigan State game. They're glad to have him back, and he's ready to go. Jarvion is a very good running back. 1,500 yards last season, 25 touchdowns. He's their workhorse. He has to run between the tackles today. Georgia, Georgia Southern is definitely going to try to blitz, but that can be the difference if they can keep their running game positive. Well, Franklin won MAC Player of the Year along with a Freshman Player of the Year. First time that's been done, and there's a completion across the middle to Davis. Another first down for the Broncos. 
and everything the coaches said about Zach is has been positive. They said he con just continues to improve week in and week out, and you can tell he he knows this offense hands down. He's a calming influence for all of the younger kids. Look for Zach to take his team down the field here. Possibly going to put some points on the board. He's he's just that good. And Coach has told us this week, not a very flashy guy, but like you mentioned, very smart, knows how to run this offense as Franklin charges ahead for a few. And it's obvious that he's not a flashy guy, but the coach has said he just get the job done. And that's what they like about him. They said every day he comes to work. He don't come to work with a briefcase. He come to work with a lunch bag. <laughs> he got a lunch bag. <laughs> That's how he comes to work every day, and they love it. Got to have a, have a hard hat to go with it, right? Got the, he got the hard hat and a jackhammer to go with it. <laughs> so you see them trying to establish the run early on with Franklin and having success against this Georgia Southern defense and really looking at the offensive line, helping to make the push for the Broncos. Very young up front for that group. And I'm looking at the offensive line, and right now, they're winning the battle at the line of scrimmage. Georgia Southern defensive linemen are going backwards. And when you have a running back like Franklin, who can give you 1,500 yards, they're going to feed him continuously until Georgia Southern do something to show that they can stop him. Well, Willie Beavers, number 70, the left tackle. Coming back with the most experience, a second-year starter along that offensive line and really one of the leaders for this offense. Terrell rares back once more. Daniel Beaverman, who had a terrific game against Michigan State last week with a career-high 12 receptions and 109 yards, gets another first down and gets the chains moving once more. And Zach is just surveying the field. It's very little pass rush from Georgia Southern right now. And you, you mentioned Beaver. Coaches raved over him, said he has NFL talent, and he is dominating his opponent right now on the line of scrimmage. The handoff and met inside is Jamari Bogan. We'll see a number of running backs in the backfield for the Broncos. Jarvion Franklin, the main go-to guy, but they've got about a stable of other guys that they can call on as well. And Bogan is one of those guys that the coaches raved about, said he can get you the tough yards. It just showed then. Between the tackles, right over the nose guard, he was stopped initially at the line of scrimmage, but continued his legs, continued that force, and ended up picking up about six yards. So very manageable second and third down situations for the Broncos as Bogan picks up maybe one or two, but they are inside the Eagles' 20-yard line. And there's no reason for them to change their game plan right now. The run is working. They can manage the clock the way they want. There's no need to rush anything. They're in scoring range right now. They're inside the red zone. They're eating up the clock. They're taking their time. They're very comfortable in this hostile atmosphere right now. And there's Franklin, stop behind the line, big play by Chris De La Rosa. So we saw De La Rosa coming up big on the kickoff return tackle for Darius Phillips here. He trips up Franklin. And Georgia Southern needed to make a stand and they just made it. They said, not in my house. You're not gonna come in here and have this long drive and put seven on us. They made the stop that they needed. Field goal here, win for Georgia Southern. Andrew Holdeman, the senior kicker, trying to put some points on the board for Western Michigan and does so successfully. So it's the Broncos who get on the board first, three to nothing, and really a very controlling first drive from Western Michigan, eating up nearly eight minutes on the clock. A good start for P.J. Fleck and his crew will take a timeout. 
Well, the Western Michigan Broncos coming out with a big statement here at Paulson Stadium, making good of their first drive after starting inside their 10-yard line. Very impressive drive by Western Michigan. They took their time, stayed with their running game, made, made passing plays when they had to make them, and Zach was completely in control of his offense. I'm anxious to see if he's able to keep that pace up the rest of today. So Derek Mitchell with the touchback. He had four or five of his kickoffs against Michigan State for touchbacks, and that's a great defense just to make sure that the Eagles stay put. Well, Fabian Upshaw has the tall task. Starting his second career game, quarterback Kevin Ellison serving a two-game suspension because he is academically ineligible. He will be back next week. Meanwhile, Upshaw, 6'1", 170 out of Titusville, Florida. A decent day on the ground last week against West Virginia. But what he's got to be able to do, Curtis, is what? He has to be able to run this spread this spread option the right way he had a good day running last week and there you go that's what, that's what they needed right there down Breeder. the sideline their first guy. handoff right there their guy the one that i talked about in the opening breeder is the guy they got to lay their hat on right now breeder can take some pressure look at that nice simple simple run play breeder with the with the speed that they talked about he's able to get to the outside get to the edge Great pickup by Breeder. That's a, that's a tone setter for Georgia Southern. That will help their young quarterback out tremendously if they can establish a serious running game. The junior out of Brooksville had 70 yards last week. He picked up a chunk of yards there, and then Fabian Upshaw decides to take it for himself. Now, one of the differences between Upshaw as opposed to Ellison is Upshaw, coaches just say one word, fast. Obviously, he's very, very fast. He looks like a 4-3 guy from what they said. But you asked me a few minutes ago, what does he have to do? He has to be able to play within the offense. And if he can do that and make a few plays with his arm, we know he can run. He's gonna, it's going to come a point where he needs to make some plays with, with his arm. And last week, he was unable to make that happen. In Western Michigan making plays on defense, swallowing Upshaw in the backfield, a lot of pressure up front. You see coming down with the tackle is Cleveland Smith, the big defensive tackle, number eight out of Miami, Florida. So third down and eight now for the Eagles at the 39-yard line. And some hesitation there going down the left sideline and thrown out of bounds over the head of Ryan Longoria. And with Upshaw, he's going to have to be able to make some plays with this arm today. They need him to complete some type of passes, whether it's quick outs, curls, something in the flat. The offensive coordinator needs to set something up for him. Doug Roos needs to set something up for him that's simple and get some confidence in his throwing ability. And if he gets that, there you go. Well, it looked like a free play. All right, so the last one we saw looked to be some movement up front. No call. They thought it was a free play. Yet again, same thing, same outcome. Now we see a flag on the field. Now we see a flag. But they really need to put him in win-win situations Offside. with his arm. Defense number After 98. Five-yard penalty. Interceptions last week, replay, that's not fourth what down. you want your quarterback to be able to do. So they got to calm him down. We know he can run. Western Michigan knows he can run, but can he make some of the passes that's needed in this game? Otherwise, they're they, they just going to stack the box and dare him to throw the ball. So a fourth down situation for the Eagles. They went for it, got five yards thanks to an offsides from Western Michigan. Upshaw decides to pitch it at the last second. Breida can't handle it and runs out of bounds. Goes out of he is tackled by, and he one, is tackled by Rontavius Atkins, who had a solid week last week against Michigan State. And Upshaw, again, is trying to, trying to turn the corner. 
It, it wasn't a bad pitch. I believe Breeder should have been able to handle that play, pitch a little a bit better. Forward. But it was last the minute. The ball will be brought back to the spot of the fumble. Georgia Southern did not reach the line to gain. Therefore, it's first and ten for Western Michigan. And we got the explanation there from Charles Lewis. So a turnover on downs. And here come the Western Michigan Broncos on their first drive. They went 79 yards before attacking three to the board. So Terrell and his offense go right back to work. Second in the Mac in scoring last year in that offense, putting up 33.8 points a game. Terrell decides to go deep, testing the corners, and Davis has it bobble in and out of his hands. Great pass by Terrell Davis, just unable to come up with it. And, you know, fantastic throw by Terrell. Davis is their go-to guy. We knew this was coming. They are, they are going to put a lot of pressure on the Georgia Southern, Southern Corners today. Davis is their guy with 1,400 yards and 15 touchdowns last season. We know he's going to see the ball. Made his, made his leap for it, just was an inch. And it's a game of inches, and he missed it by about an inch just now. Terrell going back again. Dropped by Carrington Thompson right in his hands, but they're picking on Caleb Williams, and you talked about how they're going to test that secondary. One of the things that defensive coordinator Jack Curtis talked about was staying over the top, making sure they clamp down on number eight and number 84. That's Braverman and Davis. And it's a tough task because those are two veteran receivers. They run good routes. They got really good speed, and they have really good size. Georgia Southern Corners will have to be able to play press man today some, which is the coverage that they're in right now. They have to be able to challenge these receivers at the line of scrimmage. Third and ten. Nobody open downfield. And there... The defense of Georgia Southern coming up big. Deshante Gallon, linebacker, coming up the middle to help create some havoc. Great defensive call. He was able to roll the corners up, and the corners played press man. Disrupted the play. Terrell had to get rid of the ball. He didn't see anyone open. Decided to run it. That's what Georgia Southern has to do. They have to mix it up today. Blitz packages, roll up man various coverages to try to confuse Terrell. And Derek Keaton just lets it continue to roll and roll in a very favorable role for the Broncos as the fans here at Paulson Stadium not too happy. So it's the Eagles starting deep in their own territory just at the 19 yard line. The Georgia Southern Eagles, 9-3 last season, win a perfect 8-0 in the Sun Belt to become the champions in Willie Fritz's first season. Now, they weren't eligible for a bowl berth last season because they were still transitioning to FCS to FBS. And now that Fritz and his team are here, he told us this week, look, we took a giant step forward last season. The goal is to become a perennial top 25 team, and they can do so if... They continue to ride the legs of Matt Breeder potentially. And Breeder is right now one tackle away from taking one to the house. With that speed that he has running between the tackles and able to bounce to the outside, as we talked about, he's actually one tackle away from taking one to this one. They need to keep feeding him. Well, Breeder had an FBS leading 8.7 yards per carry. That was best in the nation already. Two rushes for 44 yards with a long of 32. This time, it's Willie Fields, the very promising freshman running back. He picks up a chunk of yards. Out of America's Georgia is Wesley Fields. Coach is really high on him. Think they can, thinks he can do a lot of great things in this offense. And just a simple dive read. Phil's read, the, read his keys correctly. Good speed, good aggressive run. That's what Georgia Southern is known for. They enjoy running the football. That's what they do. That's what they lay their hat on. 
Great run by Fields. So first and 10 now. And Fields once more. Can he get to the end zone? He's got one man to beat and bringing him down is Asante Brown. So a touchdown saving tackle by Brown or else Willie Fields would put Georgia Southern up. And if it's not broke, keep on running it. Exact same play, right off tackle. Simple, simple dive read. Fields able to explode through the hole. And that's what I like about this kid. He exploded through the hole. Unfortunately, he got caught, but the coaches love his aggressiveness, the way this guy run between the tackles and off tackle quite a bit. Good run by Fields, again. The handoff to Brita, he sees daylight, touchdown! And Matt Brita delivers the first touchdown for the Georgia Southern Eagles of the 2015 season. Very good run by Breida. Simple dive play again to the other side. Breida sees opening, cuts through. Very aggressive, quick feet. All of the stuff that we talked about. This guy is a very solid football player. You know, last year he had 210 yards against Navy. So we know he can run the football. Great play by Breida. I think they're going to feed him the rest of the day. So Matt Breedham with the big touchdown run. He's got 53 yards and puts Georgia Southern on the board. The Eagles up 7-3. Well, after a 34-yard field goal by Andrew Hattleman, it was Matt Breida and the Georgia Southern Eagles who answered a nine-yard touchdown run by the junior out of Brooksville, Florida. And that's where we find ourselves with a 7-3 score here with 3.21 to go in the first quarter. And we have the dangerous Darius Phillips back. We know Georgia Southern got his number. He's looking to make some plays. Let's check him out. And Alex Hanks wisely kicks it out of the direction of Phillips, so there is no chance for a return. So taking a look back at that Georgia Southern scoring drive, they had great success running the ball on the ground. Yes, and they're feeding Breeder, our guy. I mean, he's running between the tackles. Simple, simple dive play. And now we got uh, um, Fields here. And this guy, dynamic player between the tackles. They ran the same play back to back. And then we got Breeder, quick feet, explode through the hole, touchdown. Well, Willie Fritz said Matt Breeder had to earn every yard last week against West Virginia having a little bit simpler time here against the Broncos. Double reverse, and nowhere to go. Coming up big is number 91, Logan Hunt, along with Antonio Glover. And the trick play in Statesboro don't work too often. They were prepared for a great film study. They were all over that play. Look for a seam in there, but it was nothing there but hard hitting that's what that's what georgia southern like to do at home no trick plays they hardly ever work against this defense so terrell sends a man in motion right side number 85 with tight end and straight ahead for the handoff is franklin and for Western Michigan, they just need to emulate what they did the first series. Mix the run with the pass. I don't see the need for a trick play this early in the game. They had a very good, solid drive initially. Let Zach Terrell do his thing. Mix the run with the pass. Stay calm. The trick plays, save them for when you need them. They've got to gain the 35-yard line for first down.
Terrell over to Braverman. The sure-handed receiver is Braverman, one of his favorite targets out of Miramar, Florida. And this is what Zach does well. Three-step drop, read his keys, deliver the ball quickly. That's what the coaches love about him. Braverman, that's their solid, dependable wide receiver. They know he has great hands, will, will catch the football for him. Just stay calm. There's no need to do anything but manage your offense, and that's what Zach Terrell does best. The handoff to Levante Bellamy along the right side and tripped up and slowed down in the backfield by Jamal Johnson. The hometown guy out of Statesboro. And Johnson just read the play from, from the onset made a great aggressive tackle behind the line of scrimmage. Great play, great play by Jamal Johnson. Under a minute to go here in this first quarter. Both teams having success moving the ball up and down the field. Terrell sees something, makes a change. Three to go on the play clock. And right off the hands of Matt Dobson. I don't know if he was quite in position or ready for that one, but uh, sometimes it's better to be uh, lucky than good, right? I don't think he was ready for that, but I know what he was looking at. He was looking at Jay Ellison coming right in his face, made the hit on Zach. Zach had to get rid of the ball very quickly. Ellison, well over 300 pounds, NFL talent. He made that play for Georgia Southern. Third and 10, out to the right is Davis, trying to wiggle his way through. Picks up five. And that brings up fourth down. And you, you, we kind of get the feel now that Georgia Southern is settling in, reading their keys on defense, letting Western Michigan know this is our house. We're going to play you tough because their home record here on opening weeks is phenomenal. So these guys know how to play this game at home. Very impressed with this series. Well, to your point, Georgia Southern has won their last eight here at Paulson Stadium for home openers, 25 and six. And right now it's the Georgia Southern Eagles on top, seven to three over the Western Michigan Broncos. Well, both Western Michigan and Georgia Southern over the century mark in total yards after that first quarter. Our score 7-3 here from Statesboro alongside Curtis Bayham. I'm Tiffany Green and back to punt on fourth and five are the Broncos. Jay Schroeder, rugby style kick, gets it off. And Keaton with a little room. And he's knocked near the Georgia Southern sideline. As Fabian Upshaw and this Georgia Southern defense, rather offense, get ready to return to the field. And Fabian has two good friends right now in the backfield. Fields, very aggressive, off, off, off guard runs back to back, picked up 60 yards on two carries. Great running ability. Breeder, 53 yards on three carries. That can only help Upshaw. Upshaw don't have to carry the load running the ball himself. He has people that he can hand it off to. He decides to keep this one. Picks up a few yards. It's Fabian Upshaw. Last year, 19 of 27 passing. Had two touchdowns in the air and two on the ground. But he saw action in every game last season. So Brita set to his right. And Brita running the short side. 
and is knocked out of bounds. When you look at Matt Breida, a guy who two years ago only gained one yard in that backfield last year, picked up more than a thousand, the progress that he's made. What have you seen out of him today that makes you think he's going to have an excellent season? I'm looking at his footwork. I'm looking at his quickness. I'm looking at his aggressive running style. When you look at Breida, you try to figure out what NFL back does this guy remind me of. First person I thought about was Darren Sproul. And taken down in the backfield is Fabian Upshaw. The strong stand on third and three as Robert Spillane comes up with the sack. Back to your point about Breida. Breida is the type of running back that you got to get him in multiple sets. You got to be able to throw the ball to him out the backfield because without any kind of passing game, sooner or later, Western Michigan is going to start stacking the line of scrimmage. We know Georgia Southern like, likes to run the football, but sooner or later, they're going to have to make some intermediate passes to loosen this defense up somewhat. Matt Flynn with the punt who won the starting role over Ryan Nowicki who transferred over from Ole Miss and so after the break it's Western Michigan coming back here to get their first drive going of the second quarter 12.43 to go Eagles on top 7-3 It's rebound week for Western Michigan and Georgia Southern as my partner Curtis Bayham mentioned earlier and after Zach Terrell and this Broncos offense had a great start to the game, it seems like they've settled in a little bit, but so has the Georgia Southern defense. What do you expect to see out of this drive from the Broncos? I really expect them to get back to who they really are, which is a passing team mixed with the run. They were trying to force feed it the last three series. Run, 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 run with very little passing. You have dynamic playmakers on the outside in Corey Davis and a solid receiver in Braverman. Zach can get those guys the ball. They need to get back to who they really are, passing the ball, mixing that with the run. I think this drive, that's what we're going to see. Hands it off to Franklin, and there again is that Georgia Southern defense meeting him there behind the line of scrimmage is Bernard Dawson. And Jarvin has nowhere to go. You know, he is a very good running back, but these guys definitely need to get their passing game going because that's what they lay their hat on. That's what they like to do. Three-step drops, something quick. These guys can get open. But to Georgia Southern's defense, they are playing dynamic football on that side of the ball right now. They're penetrating through the offensive line. The linebackers reading their keys, dropping in the flats. And a great pass, but it's waved off by the umpire. Braverman was the intended receiver, but the incompletion brings up fourth down. And just as I spoke, these guys tried to run the curl. Georgia Southern defense done raised the intensity level up a couple of notches since the since that first drive. And this is this is what Georgia Southern has to do to protect their secondary somewhat. They have to be able to set up some blitz packages. They have real good linebackers that can run. Oh! And the snap over the head, and it's not out of the back of the end zone by Jay Schroeder. A safety for Georgia Southern. So Wyatt Pfeiffer, the long snapper for the Broncos, snapped it over the head of Schroeder and put two more on the board for Georgia Southern. Coach Willie Fritz says, I'll take them however I can get those points. And in the course of a game, the special teams is always your third factor. That's when you, you certainly don't want to give up points that way, but the punter, Definitely did his job. He'd rather give up two than six. So he knocked the ball out of, bound, out of the, the back of the end zone to only give up two. But this just goes to show you that the intensity level of the Georgia Southern defense is beginning to be all over the stadium. Those guys have 
basically made Western Michigan go three and out for the last three series after they mounted that first 70 yard, 79 yard drive. The defense can carry you if they make enough plays. And what Georgia Southern defense is doing right now can only help Upshaw on, on the offensive side of the ball. And we've seen Jay Ellison, the nose tackle, get some penetration up front. We mentioned uh, Deshante Gallen as one of our impact players. He's leading all tacklers with five. So certainly the Georgia Southern defense stepping up, receiving. Keaton trying to get some running room. And he's tripped up near the 39-yard line. And when you're an offensive player, on either team and you see your defense putting in some serious work making plays all over the field you cannot wait to get your chance to show them that you appreciate what they're doing stopping the other opponent this is a big drive for georgia southern here in particular upshaw upshaw has to be able to stay within the offense mount a drive and continue to get a ball to Breeder and Fields. And they should set up some small type of pass for him to get some confidence up with his, with his arm. Because right now, I don't think he has any confidence in throwing the football, even short passes. I think they need to set something up for him so he can get some confidence with his arm. L.A. Ramsby on the carry. There are so many different running backs out of the backfield for Willie Fritz and one of the things he mentioned again if he's going to be successful and this Georgia Southern team wants to try to repeat within the Sun Belt Conference they've got to be able to open up the passing game and that's something that he brings from all of his experience uh, the latest coming from Sam Houston State as flags go down in the backfield around the quarterback Fabian Upshaw so Johnson on the completion and we will hear personal foul Roughing the passer on the defense number 98. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. So Jarrell McKinney called with the roughing the passer. That's another 15 yards for Georgia Southern. But simple three-step drop. First down. Simple three-step drop. Upshaw delivered a good solid pass just now. That's what the coaches need to do. They need to mix it up and let this kid showcase some of his arm strength. He is extremely strong arm, but obviously he's known for running, but that will build his confidence up where when they need the third and seven, the third and eight, they'll have confidence to go to him and let him make some plays with his arm. Well, he had a challenging uh, open to the season against West Virginia taking on a very tough Mountaineer defense as Brita coming along the left side this one could be coming back with some laundry on the field but yet again Brita they're continuing to call number 36 I think they're going to get Keating with a hole there. Um, he was definitely fighting with the corner. And it looks like I saw some cloth. There are two fouls to play. Holding on the offense number 23. That penalty is declined. Holding on the offense number 58. Ten-yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay first down. So that marches Georgia Southern back 10 yards after a big gain from Brita. And once again, Brita got to the edge, which is what he, he's, he's showing me that he has enough quickness to get to the corner and take it to the house. He's one play away from taking one to the house. Tough back, 5-9. 180 as Upshaw keeps it and you gotta watch out for him because when he sees daylight he can go tripped up by Andre Turner but a big gain from Upshaw 
brings back some of those yards for the Eagles. He got some of the yards back. Very good cut. This kid can run the football. We know that. If he can mix the run with the pass, we'll have us a dynamic quarterback there. Second and three. Play action. Upshaw. A little more space. And then it collapses as the Broncos fall on top of Upshaw. Our quarterback keeper. Not much where to go. Not many, much room rather to go with Cleveland Smith in the way. And Upshaw tried to hang in the pocket, but all running quarterbacks, when they feel uncomfortable, the first thing they think of is it's time to run. When he gets a little bit more season, he'll hang in that pocket a little bit longer because he had a receiver breaking free. And if he would have been a little bit more patient, he could have got a big game just now. Well, a patient run there by Ramsby. Originally recruited as an option quarterback, but he comes out in the running back position. And picks up a first down for the Eagles. And there's Upshaw running that spread option again. Good aggressive run by Ramsby. I mean, Georgia Southern has a tremendous stable of running backs and they're going to fluctuate them all day in and out in and out because that's what they do they run the football well they return five starters as the direct snap goes to ramsby and he's one of the four rushers coming back for this georgia southern team that accounted for 80 percent of their more than four thousand seven hundred and sixty nine yards a year ago <laughs> what a 80, great luxury, huh? 80% is a <laughs> tremendous amount. <laughs> so they lay their head on the run. We definitely know that. And a bevy of running backs have been in and out, in and out, in and out. Ramsby giving Brita a spell, getting three straight carries for the Eagles. And this is a perfect moment for Georgia Southern to do a play action play action because right now western michigan is beginning to stack the box tight end drag play action i believe will be wide open right now because they've been running 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 if they do play action right now i believe they can score they elect to hand it off to ramsby some tough running yards up ahead gets down to the five yard line and georgia southern Creeping closer to that end zone. Between the tackle run again, Ramsby picks up the first down, and Coach Fritz telling me, hey, we run the football. We don't throw the football. We run the football. <laughs> and once again, he handed it off. But I know a play action would be wide open right now because the defense right now that, that Western Michigan is playing is catering completely to the run. Upshaw decides to keep it, and he stood up. So no gain on the quarterback keeper. And when you run the ball this much consistently, your offensive line fires off, and they enjoy run blocking. That's what they do. They enjoy run blocking. These guys, Max Magana, uh, Foreman, all of those guys enjoy run blocking. Coaches know pass blocking is a little bit more challenging for this group. Upshaw, wide open on the right side and closing in was Jason Silva. <laughs> well, on that offensive line for Georgia Southern, though, Darian Foreman, the only returner along that line. So even though they've got other guys who may have some experience, it's really Foreman, the big number 63, that left guard who has really control of this offense and really controls the guys up front. Great point, uh, Tiffany. I tell you, with a true freshman starting at center and the coaches love him, he's making all the calls. Matt Frieda, second touchdown of the evening. Oh, 
so you've got to find a way to slow down number 36, but when his legs keep churning, it's hard to stop him. And that offensive line that we just finished speaking of, even though they're young, they are controlling the line of scrimmage right now. Breida is reading his keys, finding the open hole, and when Breida sees that hole, he explodes through it. That's what makes him a very good running back. He, he knows how to explode through the hole. He's a patient runner. He, he waits till the hole opens up, and that's when he explodes through it. Well, Doug Roos had a couple of key points. He said, one, we've got to take care of the football. We've got to get the ball on the perimeter. And, of course, we just got to run it. And they're doing so successfully. 164 yards on the ground for the Eagles. It's Matt Breida with his second touchdown of the game. It's been all Georgia Southern in the second quarter, first scoring off of a safety, and then Matt Breida capped off an 11-play, 61-yard scoring drive with a four-yard TD run to make it 16-3. to So a great opening start here in this first half after bouncing back, hopefully, from that tough loss to Western West Virginia, 44 to nothing on last week. And this offensive line for Georgia Southern right now is man-on-man. Man. And they're winning this man-on-man man battle. Let's see if Darius Phillips, the dangerous return man for the Broncos, can ignite this Western Michigan team instead of downing it in the end zone. He says, well, I'm going to take it already. Return one last week for more than 100 yards, but uh -uh, not having it is Mr. Campbell. Flag on the play. So a great special teams play by Georgia Southern. as Miles Campbell, the wide receiver, coming up with the tackle. During the return, holding on the receiving team number 53. He will be declined. First down, Western Michigan. And Georgia Southern special teams are completely satisfied with what they're doing thus far. They refuse to let Phillips make any type of plays on a kickoff return. He had 185 last week, but right now, if he had 30, I'd be surprised. You're making me do some work here. <laughs> Trying to find the stats for myself. <laughs> Come back with a little something. Not a lot of return yards for Darius Phillips. And quite frankly, Broncos need to get something going here. Terrell, 7 of 11 for 61 yards. Again, he had a career high performance in completions and attempts last week for 365 yards against Michigan State. Crowd on their feet here in Paulson Stadium. And an offsides from Georgia Southern. Looks like maybe Ian Bush. Offsides on the defense number 95. Five yard penalty, first down. So Bush, the six foot red freshman out of Port Charlotte will give the Broncos a little bit of breathing room. And this is, a, this is a character test for Western Michigan. They, will, they need to get several first downs here to kind of loosen this defense up because right now, Georgia Southern is dominating the line of scrimmage. And Franklin is tripped up. Their linebackers are doing their gap reads. They're filling the gaps just like they need to. And what I'm impressed with thus far is the defensive line, who started off slow, now they are dominating the line of scrimmage at the point of attack. These guys are getting very good penetration. When you get penetration against a running team, always it's going to slow them down. So Terrell with time in the pocket, eyeing down Davis. Instead, it's intercepted. Antonio Glover coming up big. 
the strong safety out of Atlanta, Georgia. Just rolled on over, and it landed right in his hands. You know, Zach had a bad read here. They was in cover two, which means the corner was playing with a safety over the top, and he basically just threw in the double coverage. Very good recovery by the safety. He got there just in time to make that play. Trying to get the ball to Davis again, their favorite playmaker. After 154 yards last week, Georgia Southern knows who Corey Davis is, and they're going to double him probably the entire game. Well, that Eagles defense was gashed for more than 500 yards in their opener, so they wanted to make sure that they did not get beat over the top this week, according to defensive coordinator Jack Curtis. A nice gain on first down as Upshaw picks up eight. And getting back to that last play, when you get your corner and your safety that can work in unison just like that, it's win-win in the secondary every time. Brita once more right up the gut. One man to beat. Can he do it? Third touchdown of the evening for Matt Brita. And he's just showing off now. Yes, he is. That's that explosion. That's that 4 3 the coaches told me about. Breeder, again, reading his keys, simple dive option, saw the crease, and watch him explode. Look at that explosion. Will not catch him unless you run in 4 3, third touchdown of the day. This the explosion that Breeder was known for last year. Six rushes for 92 yards, three touchdowns. He's letting everybody know. Georgia Southern football, we like to run it. Give it to me, I'll make things happen for you. And the Eagles have scored 23 unanswered points. So Western Michigan got on the board first, but it's the Eagles saying, this is my home, my turf, we run it. Georgia Southern synonymous with success in the FCS winning in an unprecedented six national titles. The first one coming in 1985. The last one in 2000. They're looking to have even greater success now that they've made the transition to FBS. And so far, so good. 23-3 as they welcome in Western Michigan for the first time ever an FBS opponent here in Paulson Stadium. Matt Greta, a big reason why the Eagles are off to such a great start. Three touchdowns, the last one a 34-yard scamper to put the Eagles up by 20. And Darius Phillips wisely elects to not bring it out of the end zone this time. Well, slight indecision on Phillips and end result from the last time he touched the ball he got tackled inside the five I'm looking at Western Michigan right now and I see a lot of indecisions I see a lot of plays that they made on their first drive that they're not making right now I don't want to say they're not aggressive enough but to get back to the type of football that they like to play they need to have a good solid drive here and be aggressive on offense and do what they do best. Well, P.J. Fleck and his Broncos start this drive after the break and a completion from Terrell to Braverman. 22 returning starters for the Broncos and Coach Fleck talked about just how young this ball club was and how they needed to grow up, especially in the trenches. And. They won the Battle of the Trenches, the first series. They've lost ever since. This drive is very important for Western Michigan. They're behind 22 to three, but they need to be able to lay their hat on something. They got a quarterback that can deliver the ball. Sharp passing game is what's available to them right now. Work the sharp passing game, read your keys, 
look in the flat, the curl areas. That's what seems to be available for Zach right now. And if he can deliver the ball there, I think they can mount a decent drive and possibly put some more points on the board. He's found Braverman seemingly his favorite target of the day for a second consecutive first down pass. Braverman now with six catches for 55 yards. Nearing midfield are the Broncos. And once again, Braverman this time stopped a couple of yards short of that, short of that first down. But again, moving the ball effectively, like you said, kind of short passes, just getting a rhythm. And Zach has to be patient. All quarterbacks want to go for the deep ball, you know, to get that urge, and they want to throw deep. Well, that's not what the defense is dictating for you right now. The defense is saying, we will give you the underneath stuff, but we're not going to give you anything deep and over the top. Work what the defense is giving you, read your keys, he can get several completions in the flat and curl area right now. The handoff to Jarvion Franklin after three consecutive passes. And he comes up with just a couple of yards as Franklin. So Franklin, we thought he would have a big impact for Western Michigan where they like to throw the ball a lot, getting that ground game going, very important for them, but thus far, He's been stifled just 36 yards on 10 carries, and the defense for Georgia Southern really cluing in on him. And I'm looking at the way the defensive front is playing. They are controlling the line of scrimmage right now. Up ahead, nearing the first down marker. We'll see where the spot is. Looks like it's close. So they'll bring out the sticks. In fact, it's a first down. What I like from Georgia Southern right now, though, is their defensive, their defensive front is making it difficult to run the ball between the tackles. That's what Franklin enjoys doing. He's a big back between the tackles that can bounce it outside. They are shutting that down right now. They're making it very difficult for Western to be able to run the ball. Braverman once again out to the right. Is tripped up and is out of bounds, but the Broncos, with your eyes, they're moving the ball down the field effectively on this drive. The short passing game is what's available to them. The long passing game is not. Zach has to read his keys, deliver the ball where it needs to be. That's what's available to you right now. Don't change up. Don't try to go deep. Don't try to play action fake or do anything like that. Solid drive is what they needed. They have one going right now. They're at the 31-yard line. Short passing game got you here. Keep it going. Will he look for Braverman again? No, instead, he goes with Kendrick Roberts. So, 6'3", senior out of West Michigan, coming up with the reception. And the Georgia Southern secondary, again, is playing over-the-top type of coverage. The, in, the small, short passing game is what Zach is working on. He knows that now. I think they're going to keep this up because that's what's available to him. Well, things were going well for the Broncos, but it appears there was some movement up front. This may back up Western Michigan five yards. Thirty-nine point six seconds to go, and Western Michigan open this game with a field goal. See how they end it. Before the snap, illegal snap on number fifty-two of the offense. The foul occurred with the clock running and under a minute. By rule, that would include a ten-second subtraction, but the offense has chosen to take a timeout in lieu of the ten-second subtraction. 30-second timeout for Western Michigan. That is their first timeout of the first half. And this is what coaches hate. They finally got a rhythm. They were in rhythm. Short passing game working. Rhythm is good. Penalty. Penalty has them 23-3 right now because when your offense finally gets that rhythm back, which they didn't have since the first series of the game, they got the rhythm back. They're feeling good about themselves. Coaches hate that. 
Right now, they got 39 seconds left to try to put some points on the board. Couple of timeouts in their pocket. No need to go for six right now unless it's there for you. Zach is going to read his keys, and if it's the short curl and a short passing game that's open to him, he'll deliver the ball and get it there. First and 15 from the 26-yard line. Terrell looking, looking. Once again, finds Daniel Braverman. A great catch by Braverman. And that is good enough for another first down. So move the chains. And how about Daniel Braverman being so big on this drive? Braverman is putting on a route running clinic right now. This kid is running solid routes, able to get open in the short passing game again. This is, this is his forte. That's what they know he can do, work in the 10 to 15 yard area, and he's getting open time and time again. Great, great route runner. Braverman is that. So does he look for Braverman once more? Yes, he does. And a strike and a touchdown. <laughs> so a great drive by the Western Michigan Broncos just before the close of the half. And a big touchdown reception by Daniel Braverman. And when you work within the offense, and the defense is giving you the sharp passing game. And you have a wide receiver like Braverman who runs solid routes. You know, my ex-teammate, Steve Larger, those are the type of routes that Steve ran. You get these type of routes by Braverman. He is eating the secondary of Georgia Southern up underneath. Nothing deep, underneath. He's an underneath type of wide receiver that's what he does let's watch this play and look simple route red you know you got a safety trying to cover him inside the slot not gonna happen simple outside fake easy easy slant pattern Zach delivered a good solid pass touchdown Braverman closing in on a career day 10 receptions 101 yards to go along with that touchdown he had the clip last week with a career high 12 receptions, 109 yards. So this is just first half numbers by the redshirt junior. And like you said, Curtis, he's putting on the clinic and he certainly did there on that drive. He's hot, he's running good routes. He knows he can beat the underneath coverage all day. There's no need for him to run 25, 30 yard routes right now. That intermediate 10 to 15 yard area is his home. That's where he's comfortable at. Zach is able to get the ball to him. In those situations, I look for them to feed off of this. They scored, they needed to put points on the board again. They can go into halftime now with their heads up a little bit because their offense had gotten really sluggish. They wasn't going anywhere. It was three and out, three and out, three and out. Now they got something they can go into the half with. Uh-oh, watch out. Derek Keaton. Brings it past the 30-yard line, but there's a flag on the field after the Keaton return. Willie Fritz and his ball club likely content to go into the locker room with this 23 to 9 lead. Maybe yeah. just either run a play or take a knee. They'll probably just take a knee. They're in the formation right now to just take a knee. Be content with going in 23 to 9. Offense put on a very good showcase, but I tell you what, turnovers. One was created on special teams, the interception on defense, both led to points. That's what Georgia Southern is going into the half to talk about. They had a very good first half, defensively and on special teams, creating turnovers. And, and with a back like Breeder, who was able to run efficiently between the tackles and get bounced to the outside, Georgia Southern should be very satisfied 
with their uh, performance. Other than their first drive, they played solid football this first half. Well, Matt Breida, the catalyst in the first half for the Eagles, six carries, 92 yards, and responsible for three touchdowns. It's the Georgia Southern Eagles going into the locker room with a 23-9 lead over Western Michigan. You're all excited to book that vacation flight. Plenty of seats to choose from, right? But the minute you try to use reward miles from your airline credit card, it's slim pickings. The flight you want, sorry, they ask for a ridiculous number of miles. Time to switch to the Capital One Venture card. With Venture, you'll earn unlimited double miles. And using those miles is easy. Just book any flight you want on any airline, then use your miles to cover the cost. No blackout dates. What's in your wallet? Welcome into the Capital One Halftime Report 23-9 here. The Georgia Southern Eagles on top here from Statesboro alongside Curtis Bayham. I'm Tiffany Green in that first half. We knew the Georgia Southern Eagles were going to run the ball, but we didn't know how effective they would be running it. They ran all over the Broncos. Breeder, just as advertised, aggressive running back, type of speed that NFL scouts look for. When he gets a step on you, it's six. And that's what he has shown over and over and over again. The offensive line for Georgia Southern, who we thought may be challenged, they have been winning the man-on-man -man battle today. And that is the key for why Breeder has those type of holes to be able to explode through. Breeda out of Brooksville, Florida, and certainly he's been doing work for this offense. As we take a look at the highlights, it was all him in the first half. He did a terrific job on the ground, six yards, rather six carries for 92 yards. I mean, he was just running all over the field, making plays up the gut, getting out to the perimeter, and scoring touchdowns at will. And, you know, we talked about the three facets of football. Special teams also was, it was an integral part in this first half. First, the, um, out of, the ball went out of, out of the end zone. They got two points there, but moreover, Darius Phillips, we have not heard his name because they have been keeping him contained. No kickoff returns today. Georgia Southern practice this all week. He's doing a wonderful job. And we'll be right back with more from the Capital One Halftime Report. Georgia Southern extremely tough at home as we welcome you back to the Capital One Halftime Report. They've won 25 out of their last 31 games in home openers and they lead the Broncos 23-9 to at the half. Taking a look at the first half stats, it was Georgia Southern and their ground attack really crippling that Broncos defense led the way also in total yards pretty even there though curtis in the time of possession so we will see what adjustments both teams will make at the half as pj fleck and his ball club are down but the western michigan broncos go into the locker room on a high after scoring just before the end of the first half we'll have more from Paulson Stadium here in Statesboro. A gorgeous night. The rain has moved through and look at there, a picturesque sky. We'll be right back. Western Michigan and Georgia Southern both in search of their first win of the season. It looks like so far it's been all Georgia Southern with a 14-point lead. They have really taken control of it. But if you're Coach P.J. Fleck for Western Michigan, what adjustments are you looking to make in this second half? The adjustments that I'd be interested in is to keep that last drive format. Short passing game, Braverman able to dominate the secondary of Georgia Southern. Short passing game is what's working. No need to go downfield. Nickel and diamond, long drives, mix it with the run, formula for success for Western Michigan. All right, I'm going to be a good friend of you here and try to move it up just a little bit so the folks can hear you at home. But for, you know, Willie Fritz, his defense, we saw the Eagles really come alive on the other side of the ball. They started out a little bit slow. 
but what more uh, can they do here in this second half to kind of slow down really Braverman, Daniel, Daniel Braverman? The defensive front has to play better. They're getting dominated at the point of attack. Georgia Southern's offensive line, who we thought would be the drop-off, they stepped up to the plate. They are actually blowing Western Michigan's off defensive front off of the ball right now, which leaves holes for Breed to run through. And when he sees gap in holes, he's quick enough and fast enough to hit it in there and bounce to the outside. And if he gets a step on you, he's going to be hard to catch. P.J. Fleck, we know, a very enthusiastic coach, and we'll have his ball club ready to go in the second half. Same thing for Willie Fritz. We'll step aside from the Capital One Halftime Report here from Statesboro. Only the second year. It's shiny and new, like a little baby that I invented. Oh, you, you, know. you invented it? Yeah, yeah, I did. All right. Did you watch last year? Third string QB took home the trophy. Third string, that, that's you guys. You don't know what's gonna happen in that playoff. I can't wait. Aren't you supposed to be working or something? Yeah, I am. I am. I am. High school, Dr. Bobby. High school, Dr. Bobby. Is that like a regulation to you? I think it needs more air. It's the playoff. It's only the second year. It's shiny and new like a little baby that I invented. Oh, you, you, know? you invented it? Yeah, yeah, I did. All right. Did you watch last year? Third string QB took home the trophy. Third string, that, that's you guys. You don't know what's going to happen in that playoff. I can't wait. Aren't you supposed to be working or something? Yeah, I am. I am. I am. High school, Dr. Bobby. High school, Dr. Bobby. That like a regulation to you. I think it needs more air. Well, the Georgia Southern Eagles in their second season in the FBS, they made the big transition when 9-3 and three a season ago, 8-0 and oh in the Sun Belt Conference, and they're looking to repeat as conference champions. But, of course, they have a very tough conference schedule, and Western Michigan is one of those opponents. Taking a look around the world of college football in the top 25, Ohio State, the number one team, Alabama right behind them. And just a week ago, it was Western Michigan who welcomed in Michigan State in the Waldo Stadium in front of a packed house, the number five team in the country, and they played them tight, 37 to 24. Curtis, who's your team this year? Oh, that's tough. I know I'm putting you on the spot. No, yeah, see, I caught see, you. <laughs> see, now, I cannot be biased. I'm a Tulane Green Wave guy. So, I'll be crazy not to pick my own team, but just looking at the climate of college football, Alabama looks like the team to beat this season. I watched them against Wisconsin, and offensively, defensively, and special teams, they look phenomenal. So Alabama, once again, I think would be one of the four teams. Ohio State looked mighty tough as well, and Anytime you have this many SEC teams that's good, you never know what a team like LSU would do as well. Well, we are joined in the booth by the athletic director for Georgia Southern, Tom Kleinlein. And, Tom, you've got to like the performance thus far of uh, the Eagles and the way they've come out really in this first half of their home opener. What have you liked so far? Well, big improvement since last week. You know, obviously our offense is picking a little bit. Just uh from an athletic director standpoint, I'm always excited when I see this many fans turn out. You know, we had a little bit of inclement weather, but still a great turnout from our fans. Our kids are playing hard and you know, got a good lead at halftime, but this is a good West, uh, Western Michigan team, so we got to play hard in the second half. You had the opportunity to bring in a very successful coach, a proven winner in Willie Fritz. How did you lure him here to Statesboro? Well, you know, a lot of our tradition, our history, the opportunity to come in here and be a part of a program that's won significant national championships. And then with us making the move, he had the opportunity to do a lot of firsts. He could be the first head coach to win a championship at the FBS. He could be a head coach to be the first guy to go to a bowl game. Coach, I'll tell you what. I was curious to know about how do you feel about being in the Sun Belt Conference right now. Tough teams like ULL, 
who plays in the New Orleans Bowl, where I stay. Mm -hmm. Is it your thoughts that your team will be playing in the New Orleans Bowl in the very near future? Oh, yeah, I, I, I feel like we got a team that's capable and a program that's capable of being in a bowl game. Sun Belt's a great conference, great football teams in that conference. So a lot of teams similar to us that have made the move up and developed uh, great winning traditions, and we're excited to be a part of it. Good, good. And the Sun Belt, when you can go 8-0 your first year, you got a lot of teams mad at you right now. Yeah. They say, where did this team come from? Well, we uh, you know, had a great year last year, a lot of success, and obviously coming in this year, it's a little different when you got a little bit of a target on your back and people are looking at you, but I think our kids are going to respond well. And like I said, just glad to be a part of this conference, and I think it's an exciting brand of football to watch. You had the opportunity to be bowl eligible last season. You were denied the request to be able to do that because of the transition from FCS to FBS. How important now is it and how much more exciting is it to be bowl eligible this year? Oh, it's awesome. I mean, this is the first opportunity in two years for our program to be uh, have an opportunity to play in postseason. Uh, so, you know, we, we got to go out and do the things we need to do and, and be successful to give our fans and our young people an opportunity to play in a bowl game and, and do all that fun stuff that college football is about. All right. Thanks so much. As Appreciate we it, guys. joined in the booth by the athletic director, Tom Kleinlein, doing a terrific job here at Georgia Southern. We appreciate your time. Thank you very much. So it was Georgia Southern who elected to defer in the first half. So they will receive here in the second half with Derek Keaton deep. Willie Fritz, second year in this program. Again, a very successful coach at all levels. Two-time national championship with the NJCAA. As that one sails out of the back of the end zone. So we saw the Georgia Southern offense go to work, especially on the ground. That's exactly what they like to do. They were the best in the Sun Belt in scoring offense and total offense and rushing offense. 200 and 12 yards total. How about subtract seven from that? And guess what? That's how many rushing yards they have. Once so, again. Wow. <laughs> I tell you, the offensive line, if they can continue to play the second half as they did the first half, successful running game will follow. Breeder reading his keys, patient runner waiting to the hole develops and exploding through it. Offensive line is the key to this second half for Georgia Southern. Once again, the handoff to Brita. He's twisted around and brought down. Picked up about five yards, but if we know anything about P.J. Fleck, we know that he gave his team a rah-rah speech during halftime to get them ready. Be interested to see how they respond here on this opening drive of the second half, their defense especially. They got an earful, we know that. But they came into the half on a high because they had just scored. I know coach got after them, but guess what? There go that guy Breeder again, and no one's going to catch him. No one. Ten. Another touchdown. Five. Touchdown. Matt Breeder is boss this afternoon, rather this evening. Another touchdown for Matt Breeder. The junior out of Brooksville. And tonight, Rita is a bad young man. Simple off tackle play, still forms the linebacker. And look at that acceleration. Look at it. At the 10, the 5, touchdown. That's what Rita brings to the table. And look at it. He's celebrating four touchdowns. This young man is going to be close to almost 200 yards rushing now. And he's doing the sign. He wants to be fed. He wants to be fed. He wants to be fed. And when you have a running back explosive like Breeder, he wants the ball more. All good running backs want 20. 20 carries. We'll step aside as Matt Breeder rushing it in from 70 yards out, putting Georgia Southern on top by 21.
All smiles and cheers from the Georgia Southern fans as Matt Breida is putting on a show. Four touchdowns, tying a career best. The last time that happened was last season against Georgia State. And we mentioned earlier just about how he led the FBS in averages, or rather rushes per carry with 8.7 yards. Well, tonight averaging just about 21 yards a carry. And you know, his career high is 210 yards against Navy. I think he knows that. <laughs> and in the back of his mind, he's saying, hey, I can beat my own record right now. <laughs> with runs like that, being patient with the explosion that this kid has, I look for that 210 to be a distant memory. <laughs> And probably within the next three or four carries because Breida came here ready to play and he has been extremely aggressive with his running ability and he knows once he gets a step on the secondary no one can catch him. you got to think just how long offensive coordinator Doug Roos and head coach Willie Fritz will leave him in there again with a great stable of backs. I think Breida might be uh, petitioning to make sure he stays in there at least for the remainder of the quarter as Terrell and the Broncos open up the second half on their first drive. And what's imperative for Western Michigan right now is a game to mount a good solid drive. It's 30 to 9. They by no means are out of this game. But if they can continue with the short passing game, get the ball moving, mix it with the run, I believe they can get back into this contest because they got a solid quarterback and they can lay their hat on what he does. Well, he's 15 of 20. And that one is picked off. How about Antonio Glover coming up with his second INT of the game? He made an acrobatic catch going out of bounds, looking like a wide receiver in the first half. And this one off of the deflection and gives Georgia Southern's offense another chance. And once again, the defensive front of Georgia Southern, just like the offensive front, dominating the line of scrimmage. And look, Jay Ellison again. Big Jay Ellison, hard to move, really hard to move. Excuse me, Sap. Really hard to move in the interior. Got his hands up, created the turnover. Now, <laughs> Breeders back in the backfield. And the handoff to L.A. Ramsby. Ramsby. He got ahead for a yard. L.A. stands for Little Alfred. He's a <laughs> junior. They like to call him L.A. And with a multiple asset of running backs, and I'm going to call them assets, <laughs> Georgia Southern can mix it up. They have interchangeable parts, none like Breeder, but the other running backs are very good, solid players as well. Flags fly on to the field as Ramsby comes down with it. But it could come back. There's a flag on the play. Illegal formation on the offense. Five men in the backfield. Five yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay, second down. But the good thing about Georgia Southern's offense right now, even though they just had a penalty, their quarterback knows who he who his playmakers are right now. We have not had to call up Shaw's name for making any type of turnovers or anything like that. He's giving the ball. He's reading his keys. He's running this spread option like it's supposed to be ran. If he continue to do that, he can mount several games where he's the guy. Well, Wesley Fields, we saw him in the first half with two carries for 60 yards. So Fields will likely see a little bit more of him. You said you liked what he was able to do with this team. What do you think would happen, or what do you think is going to happen when Kevin Ellison comes back at quarterback? Well, coaches generally will not give up a starting player's job to injury. 
um, I think Ellison will get his job back. But you know now that you have a solid backup. And if he continue to make plays like this and able to run efficiently like that, you know, it could be a toss-up. That's going to be a tough coaching decision if, if Upshaw continue to play at this level. Now, mistakes like he made last week, quick hook. But tonight, he's playing within the offense. I know they preach to him all week. Play within the offense. Don't try to do more than what we ask you to do. And if you do that, your athletic talent will take over. And that's what's happening tonight. Well, Fabian Upshaw originally committed and signed with FIU, but transferred here to Georgia here. Southern. So the redshirt junior again Getting ample playing time in L.A. Ramsby. Once more, we're going to another rush. But see, the huddle right now is really good for Georgia Southern. And I'm going to tell you why. The line, the offensive line is controlling the line of scrimmage. The running backs know this. The quarterback knows this. They're having fun because they're watching those offensive linemen and I don't want to call them the Hogs like the Washington Redskins, but those offensive linemen right now is controlling the game, not just on offense for Georgia Southern, but their defensive front is doing the exact same thing to Western Michigan. We have not seen any penetration by the defensive front of Western Michigan in any drive that Georgia Southern has mounted. Same thing here. They're inside the 10, and they're blowing them off the football. Upshaw scrambles out of the pocket and throws it away. And along that offensive line, Roscoe Bird, the big right guard, number 56, transferred in from UAB. And there are several transfers on this roster for Georgia Southern, 17 in total. It was Roscoe Bird who again started several games with the Blazers, 12 in total last season. And once they shut down the football program back in 2013, he found his way to Statesboro. And they love him here. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just say that they love him here. Upshaw decides to keep it and just tripped up. And that's one of the things Coach Willie Fritz talked to us about earlier this week about being a little bit stronger because if he can try to avoid or get a little bit stronger and avoid some of those ankle tackles, you know, he can break off a lot more runs. That one would have been good for a touchdown. Well, you know, weight room is certainly calling it. Okay, we, we see his length and all of that. Quickness is his forte. He's a very fast kid, but they want him to be able to run through some of those arm tackles. And if he can get his body at that level, look out. This kid will be phenomenal. So 9.31 to go here from Statesboro. It's Georgia Southern comfortably on top, 33 to 9. It's the first time a school from Michigan has ever come to Paulson Stadium. The Broncos down 33 to 9. But one of the things that PJ Fleck told us the week, this week was that he wanted to make sure that he scheduled tough opponents and guys, or rather teams, that were champions. So when you play a, a Michigan State or the Sun Belt Conference champions in Georgia Southern and Ohio State, the national champions, coming up in two weeks, he says being able to play those teams will help prepare his team to know what it's like to be a champion. Those are character building. And that's what coach knows. Those are character building games. You know when you go into a hostile environment and play someone that's a champion. You look as a coach at what can I do to emulate this team because they're winning and we are not. They're at the pinnacle of college football. Ohio State, national champion. Michigan State, always top five defense. If you can hold your own and play well against those type of teams, then when you play teams in the MAC Conference, you got, a, you got a much better chance to be successful. And I think that's what Coach is talking about. He don't mind playing up 
because it's a character builder for his team in the long run. And essentially, they finished second in the MAC, right, and many the people the were not expecting them to make the great turnaround that they did, but P.J. Fleck has come into Kalamazoo and really, really revitalized not only the program, but also the town as well, and he talked long and hard about creating a culture and establishing an identity, row the boat, and we'll talk about that a little bit later, but he really just says, hey, I'm a sixth grade social studies teacher who's just teaching the game of football. <laughs> and that's what he loves to do, teach, character builder. And his team is a reflection of what he believes in. They're behind right now, but we have not seen any dramatic changes. He's sticking to his script. He feels that this is what is going to be good for his football team. You know, stay within the offense, good solid plays, and they're one drive away from being back in this game. So the short passing game is what's working. Coach knows time is not on his side. But again, the short passing game is getting, you know, 8, 10 yards every time they utilize that tool. So what I see is a reflection of Coach Fleck within his players. But I will also say this. Defensively, they're going to have to mix it up. That base defense they're running is not working. Georgia Southern has their number. They're blowing them off the line of scrimmage. They're going to have to start using some blitz packages, run some dogs, some different types of coverages to create some type of havoc against the Georgia Southern's offense. Braverman on that last reception now has a career high. Ties his career high for catches with 12, 115 yards, and Franklin running out to the left. Jeremy and Franklin on the carry. How important is this drive, not only for this game, but also for the Broncos and their season as they try to gain some momentum going into Murray State next week at home? This is another drive that I think has to end in some type of points because they're inside the 50 now. What they're doing is working. So they don't need any penalties because last drive, they had the offside, they had the penalty, shut down several several plays. So right now, I think if they can stay penalty free, they have a chance right now to not necessarily make a dominating statement, but let Georgia Southern know, hey, we may be behind 33-9, but we're not going anywhere. Goes back to what Coach Flex said, character. His kids would never quit. I don't think this team will lay it down. They're going to keep fighting to the last second is on the clock because that's the type of character that Coach Fleck is looking for. Third and six. Taro trying to bark out the instructions as the noise level raises here. Good protection. Looking for his receivers. And out wide to the right to Michael Hendry. Made the completion, but didn't pick up any yards. Well, you have to look at the body language of both sidelines right now. It's simple, three-step drop, trying to get the ball out to pick up some yards. Defense read the play, made the tackle. This is a gigantic play for Western Michigan. They need this first down extremely bad to keep this drive going. The Broncos unable to complete a fourth down earlier in this game. Let's see if they can be a little bit more successful instead. In the hands of who? Antonio Glover. My, oh, my. It's Antonio Glover's show tonight. The red shirt senior is red hot. Glover, excellent coverage just now, but... Zach tried to throw it to triple coverage, trying to go to Braverman again. He's triple covered, should not have made that throw. Bad pass, bad read on Terra, but hey, Johnny on the spot. <laughs> Glover said he'll take that anytime you want to throw it in my territory. I'll be glad to take that to the house. Almost did. Uh, break one tackle, and that's six. Great game for Glover. Three interceptions, big.
for any defensive back. He's repping the ATL, shawty. Huh? Yes, he <laughs> is. Yes, he is. Upshaw on the Eagles offense back on the field. And Brita is and wrapped up by and Austin Lewis. And once again, defense creating turnovers for the offense. And that's what Georgia Southern has done time and time again tonight. They've created situations to put their offense in a short field. Once again, they have a short field inside of 50. You know, points can be easy, easier gotten this way. They're inside the 50 already. You know, and thus far, Western has, has not been able to stop the running game. Design run up the middle. And Upshaw Maybe is Upshaw greeted by, is by 10, a crowd Robinson of Blake. white jerseys. And I was alluding to earlier about the sidelines. And you look at Georgia Southern sideline and the kids are high-fiving and they're all over the place. Take a look at the western sideline. They're kind of in depressed mode. Someone needs to get enthusiastic over there. I know Coach Fleck is all over them. They need to get excited here and try to get a stop. Breida tucks it in the run. Goes ahead for a few yards. So Matt Breida, really the game changer tonight on offense. But a lot of the success has been also set up by the Georgia Southern defense. And we just saw on that last defensive stop, Antonio Glover. Also being a big playmaker. And that's a win for Western Michigan. That's what they needed. They needed a stop. A little trickeration here. You see big number 91 barreling forward. It's not too often, right? <laughs> it's Logan Hunt. <laughs> Out of Sandersville, Georgia. Almost picked it up. He was up back in. <laughs> A good try by Coach Willie Fritz and the Eagles, but instead not coming up with anything. Turns it over on downs, but the Eagles up by 24. Oh, to be young again. There's a football game going on on the field, but these guys and gals are like, got some fun of our own happening in front of the Ted Smith Family Football Center, a state-of-the-art facility built and completed back in 2014, handling the day-to-day -day operations for this Georgia Southern program. As Terrell... Tries to find his favorite target of the night and Daniel Braverman. <laughs> so Braverman has had a terrific night, a career high night, both in receptions and yards. And the Georgia Southern defense has certainly worked on Corey Davis. Uh, he, we, we have not called his name other than being double covered earlier um, he he needs to get involved in this offense some type of way if they are trying to make some type of comeback he's a big play wide receiver and, and thus Franklin. far the defense that Johnson. coach Pinkham the DC for Western Michigan even though he is on the other side of the ball he coaches what the defensive backs he knows what the Georgia Southern defense is doing to his wide receiver and they're up in the booth he may need to nudge the OC <laughs> and tell him what's going on because it's very obvious what they're doing to his number one wide receiver right now well Franklin out of the backfield comes up Madison with that catch they cross midfield So 240 and counting here in the third quarter alongside Curtis Bayham. I'm Tiffany Green from Statesboro, Georgia. Turned out to be an excellent night. We saw some rain move through here, but a clear night 
for football. And these fans in Statesboro, they were going to come out rain or shine. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful place to play college football. Terrell with some pressure, and he's swallowed up in the backfield. Big play coming up from Bernard Dawson. He had one and a half sacks last week. Credit him with the sack here. Very good blitz, blitz there, unblocked, unblocked once again. Offensive line for Western's been challenged all game. They're losing the line of scrimmage right now. No one picked him up from the outside. Easy sack opportunity. With the short passing game, Georgia Southern defensive coordinator is going to start sending some blitzes because that's the only thing that Western has been able to do, the short passing game. Seven there yard go blitz loss. again. Sets up third and 12 and unable to bring it in is Thompson. Some good coverage there by Darius Jones Jr. And they just ran a free safety blitz with Matt Dobson. They're pulling out all the stops right now because when you have a short passing game, trying to get the ball out of your hands quick, and your defensive front, your front seven is dominating the line of scrimmage, you can ease that free safety in there and shoot that blitz, and they got to him just in time. So Keaton calls for the fair catch. And Georgia Southern will start things off at their 16-yard line. A minute and nine to go here in this third quarter. And Coach Fritz and his team looking ahead to September 26 when they go to Idaho, starting off conference play in the Sun Belt. Who do you see as some of their biggest competition for this season in that Sun Belt Conference? Well, ULL has played in the last two New Orleans Bowl games. And they are always a formidable opponent. Um, they play well offensively. They play well defensively. Solid special teams. Um, ULL would be the team that I would say would be their major competition. But then, but then you got Appalachian State who always play well, and they're in the same situation as, as Georgia Southern coming out of the SOCON Conference. That game is going to be at Appalachian, October 22nd. Tough contest, tough, tough place to, to play. Uh, that'll be a game changer right there. Upshaw finally lets this one fly. B.J. Johnson is completely covered, and how about great defense there by Rontavius, rather Ronald Zamort. Very good corner coverage there. Uh, a decent throw by Upshaw just then. I mean, he put it where only his receiver could basically get the ball. Uh, almost made a one-hand catch, but that's dynamic coverage right there. Corner played it from the word go, and that's what you have to do as a corner. Uh, Ronald Sr., he done seen all the routes. He done seen the route tree. So he read it, read his keys, played good, solid defense. That's what a senior does. That's what Coach Fleck talks about. He expects his seniors to be leaders. And that play right there, his corner is saying, hey, I'm not giving up. Well, I'm Broncos, still going to do my job. The Broncos hold on third down. So that will be the last play of the third quarter as the Georgia Southern Eagles ahead by 24. And Willie and Fritz Broncos. and his crew trying to hand P.J. Fleck his second loss of this season. Come right back with us. Fourth quarter action coming up on the other side of the break. Remember, check out Nat's Daily Specials for lunch and dinner. These Georgia Southern fans aren't going anywhere. They've seen their team put up 33 points tonight after being shut out last week, having a 242-game snap being held scoreless 
against West Virginia. So the punting unit on and Braverman. Fair catches this one. Western Michigan will take the field to start this fourth quarter. So let's take a look at the Sun Belt standings. Again, Georgia Southern looking to repeat Appalachian State. Lost to Clemson earlier today. UL Monroe with a 24-0 lead. Texas State trying to bounce back off their loss to Florida State. And how about Louisiana Lafayette? Well, I am also looking at the Arkansas State 10-3 over Missouri, number 21. That, is, that could be big. We need to follow that one for the rest of the night because Arkansas State has a solid program up there. They've been to three straight bowl games. Somehow, Terrell gets that ball off, and Franklin, with the catch out of the backfield, he's been big, a big weapon for Terrell tonight along with Beaverman. Yeah, but you know, we still kind of get the, the feel that Franklin has never really gotten it going like he did last year. Um, they're feeding him with the ball. He has about 50 yards rushing on 14 carries, but he still has not got any rhythm because his offensive line is getting dominated at the point of attack. He's not seeing the type of holes that he needs to see to be successful. Right now, Georgia Southern defensive front, at this point in the game, they have won each quarter other than that first drive. So Western Michigan opened this game and marched down the field to put up three points on the board after Andrew Hattleman knocked through a 34-yard field goal. From that point on, Georgia Southern scored 23 unanswered points. As the Broncos with a completion here just shy of the first down. Carrington Thompson out of Houston, Texas. Transferred over from Northwood University. And as we see P.J. Fleck getting a lot of transfers as well, but also he's worked on his recruiting, trying to make sure he gets his guys in his third season at Western Michigan. Big third down and one coming up for the Broncos. The handoff to Franklin, and he gets enough to move the sticks. And Coach Curtis, defense coordinator, George Southern is mixing up his coverages now. Last play, he only rushed three, had everybody else reading their keys, covered the flat, the out, the deep patterns, everything was covered. Curious to see if he's going to continue that three person rush or is he going to start blitzing and put some pressure on Zach to try to make him get into another turnover type situation. He has three interceptions tonight. If he can get pressure on him, they may be trying to get him to throw four. Franklin breaks a tackle, spins off, and gets down to the 16-yard line of Georgia Southern. So a nice play out of the backfield. And once again, Terrell to Franklin, a big connection for the Broncos. Really good move by Franklin. A guy that big with those type of feet, <laughs> he loved that. Quickness, acceleration, big guy that can catch the ball. Win-win type of situation when this guy has the ball in his hand. Braverman set in motion. And Franklin is tripped up by Dobson and stopped by Darius Sapp. And this is a very good drive by Western. They're two playmakers, Zach Terrell and Franklin. They're basically carrying this drive right now. And of course, Braverman is one catch away from getting open. So, you know, this kid, this is his comfort zone. They're in the red zone. This is when he can create just that crease for Zach to make a good throw. Oh, 
And there, the drop right in and out of the hands of Donnie Ernsberger. So the sophomore out of Battle Creek, Michigan, just took off before he secured the ball. Third and down and eight now. And they don't throw much to the tight end, but they really needed him to come up with that catch. Just took his eye off the ball too quick. Um, go back to him. Maybe he'll make amends. So some confusion for Georgia Southern's defense. They elect to take a timeout the first of the second half. This is also going to be a medium timeout. So Willie Fritz still liking what he sees, but uh, he needs to make sure he sorts things a few few things out here on this third and eight. It's Georgia Southern on top. 10.58 here to go in the fourth quarter. Third down and seven coming up for Western Michigan. The favorite target for Zach Terrell all night has been Daniel Braverman. We'll see if he finds number eight and white. Instead, it's Thompson, Carrington, Thompson in for the score. Pass is complete to number 15. So Carrington Thompson, Thompson puts Western Michigan on the board. I'm trying to chomp away at this lead and of course, this is character building time too. They're not out of this ball game as you said earlier, Curtis. No, they have plenty of time they, left. They got almost 11 minutes. Uh, very good setup with that play. Uh, wide receiver made the catch, which was which is always the key when you see daylight. You got to catch the ball first. But they had the blockers out there, and getting back to Braverman, he was just covered by the free safety one on one. And I think they thought the ball was going to go to Braverman. So the offensive coordinator really made a great call to get that ball in the end zone. Going for the two-point conversion. Plenty of time. And Terrell finds Jeremiah Mullinex for the two-point conversion. <laughs> You know, just a, just a quick screen release. Had blockers out there. The big thing with the wide receiver is a secure to catch first. And that's what he did. And then it's just a matter of using his vision to get into the end zone. And these guys, they got a lot of fight in them. Coach Fleck not going to let them quit. They got a lot of fight in them. 33-17, plenty of time left on the clock. They need their defense to show up right now. Well, they Coach need Fle to have a three and out. Yeah, Coach Fleck talks to us about row the boat. You'll see it all over. He's wearing something, talking about he's a rower, rowing the boat. The oars symbolizing the energy you bring to your life. It keeps you moving. He said also the boat represents sacrifice. you got to continue to give and build the boat. And then compass means the direction you're going in, the leaders. And so he has continued to promote that theme and that idea and really get his guys on the same page so that they can continue to gel together and do something that hasn't been done along in a long time in Western Michigan and that's really been a part of the big turnaround for the Broncos since he's come on. Well, I see a rejuvenated sideline over on Western Michigan. The Broncos look completely rejuvenated now. And that's what a good drive will do for you. No mistakes, solid drive. Now, everybody's back into the game. Coach Fleck won't let them quit. The sideline got a, got a lot of energy now. They need a three and out. It's time to pull that blitz package out. It's time to shut down the run. It's time to get that tackle for a loss right now. Who's going to make the play on defense? I know that's what Coach Fleck told them. Someone on defense got to step up to the plate right now and make a play. Well, we saw last week Jason Silva being one of those key defenders. Austin Lewis also at that linebacker position. Rontavius Atkins and Ronald Zamora, the two 
guys in the secondary have been quiet. But of course, if you're a defensive coordinator, you're not wanting your guys on the, the last line of defense to be making a lot of the tackles as Ramsby rolls ahead for a few yards. You certainly don't want your secondary to lead your team in tackles, but this right now is their moment. This is when someone, it doesn't matter which position, someone on defense got to say enough is enough. It's time for me to make this play to get my offense the ball back. And with 10 minutes left in the game, plenty of time to mount a comeback. This series is key for what Western Michigan needs to do. And the handoff once more. It's Wesley Fields up ahead, and that's plenty for a first down. <laughs> Just as you spoke about coming up with the big stop and standing to Fields and brings up a big run. Man on oh man, fullback pull, created the crease, Fields saw it, exploded through the hole. The theme of this game tonight is the offensive and defensive fronts of Georgia Southern. They have been able to dominate that aspect of the game. And when you can do that, you'll give your running backs, which they love to run the ball, a chance to be successful. Well, they led the FBS in rushing yards last season. Check this out, 350 tonight compared to just 27 for Western Michigan. So you think they love the run? And Again, you don't get 350 yards unless your offensive line and your defensive line is dominating the line of scrimmage. On both sides of the ball, Western Michigan has not come up with a formula yet, offensively or defensively, to win the battle at the line of scrimmage. And in a football game, when you can win the battle of the line of scrimmage, typically you'll win that game. There are so many great running backs in the FBS this year. You think about Nick Chubb from Georgia, Leonard Fournette from LSU. Can Matt Breida be considered one of those great running backs that we should keep our eye on? Almost 200 yards tonight. He keeps running at this pace. He'll be on someone's watch list. Definitely will be on someone's watch list. He's showing me not only does he possess the ability to run between the tackles but he's showing me that my breakaway speed my talent at that level can win us football games as well and they haven't thrown the ball to him tonight but I'm sure a kid of this caliber would love to catch some screens out the backfield. Well, Fabian Upshaw just puts a uh-uh move on him look at him he could get to the end zone one man to beat and he's pushed out of bounds and a late hit as a flag goes up. So they'll get even closer as Fabian Upshaw puts on a jump move. And this is the one Fabian been waiting on all night. He's watching Breida get yard after yard after yard. He said, hey, I want some of this too. I want, I want to get in after on the play. After the play, on you know, conduct on number 14 from of the defense. Phillips. That is his first unsportsmanlike foul of the game. Close to the end zone. Penalty will but be enforced half the distance, automatic, first down. Upshaw has been waiting on his turn, and I thought he would score just now. You know, got a lot of good speed. As you said, had a juke move. Um, this kid is showing that he can bounce back from a really bad game last week to a very successful game this week. That home-cooked meal. That home cooking, <laughs> he got he, he got back to eating the type of meals that he's used to and is showing on the field. Upshaw calls his number once more on the quarterback keeper. And he has 100 yards on the ground. So just one completion tonight, but he's got 15 rushing attempts for 100 yards. One completion for seven yards. But he's doing it with his legs tonight. His arm was not needed. Not tonight. His arm was certainly not needed. And that goes back to the up front guys. They're giving him room to run. They're giving him room to do what he does best. And 
when you have an offensive line that's aggressive and blowing them off the ball. As L.A. Ramsby running behind that offensive LA line Ramsby says he game. wants to get the in on the scoring party. He said, Matt Breida, let me join you, brother. <laughs> When your line is playing that well, they're able to control what the running back and the quarterback is going to do. Makes everybody feel good. These guys are out here battling. They're battling. They're battling. They know they won the line of scrimmage. And the offensive front don't get a lot of fanfare unless they get caught holding or something like that. But tonight, these guys... Let it be known that this is how Georgia Southern plays. And if their offensive line and defensive line can continue to play at this level, they will be able to contend for another championship in the Sun Belt. Well, the Eagles putting this one out of reach. The one-yard TD punch from L.A. Ramsby, and it's Georgia Southern on cruise control. Well, if you're just joining us, the score indicates Georgia Southern on time, but the story behind it is their rushing attack. 401 yards on the ground in that last seven play, 75 yard drive, capped off by a one yard TD run from LA Ramsby. Georgia Southern riding the wave of their ground attack. 200 yard rushers, Matt Breida, on most, most of the first half, Fabian Upshaw coming out behind him. And Wesley Fields nearing the century mark. As Alex Hanks kicks it off. And this one bobbled up ahead and knocked loose by Chris Della Rosa. How about Chris Della Rosa? Fumble on the ground. I believe that's Georgia Southern football. Yes, it is. And it is. Chris Della Rosa, though, credit him for coming up huge. He's made some terrific special teams plays tonight. And James Dean recovers the fumble. So mishandled here by Bellamy and then pop loose from Della Rosa. Pitch a perfect tackle by De La Rosa. Certainly, that's how you want to do it. All kids looking. No head-to-head -head contact. He was able to turn his shoulder. That's how you need to teach tackling. That was a pitcher perfect tackle for today's football. Well, Chris De La Rosa out of Lake Brantley High School in Altamont Springs has had some monster plays as Ramsby gets the Eagles inside the Broncos five yard line. And you mentioned to me earlier when would be a good time to take Breida out of the game. Now is that time. Now. <laughs> <laughs> it's 40-17 with five minutes, 5.53 left in the game. Now it's time to get your other running backs the guys that second, even third team, some carries, so they can get familiar with what you want to do offensively. No better time to do it right now at home. Ramsby, straight forward. <laughs> Tackle by Robert Spillane out of Oak Park, Illinois. And that brings up third down. The fire that Western Michigan had previously with the drive and it went away, it's completely gone now. Um, they put up a good fight, but the offensive line again and the defensive line changed the whole outcome of this contest. Mm -hmm. Believe me, when you're playing an opponent the first quarter and, and you are both of you guys going at it and it's, it's an even situation, 
But in the fourth quarter, when you've been getting beat and been getting exploded on over and over and over again, that wears on. And I'm looking at a worn out defense in Western Michigan right now. They came in town, don't know what they were expecting, but this Georgia Southern football team rarely loses at home. Needless to say, they protected their home turf tonight. 25 and 6 in their last 31 games here at Paulson Stadium. As we will take a timeout, as there is a timeout on the field. We'll step aside. Fourth and seven coming up. Georgia Southern leading the way. With the former Tulane and NFL cornerback, Curtis Bayham, I'm Tiffany Green. Fourth down here. And coming out of the timeout, Willie Fritz, Fritz sends on his kicking unit as Alex Hanks will attempt the 25-yard field goal. Through the uprights, and it's good. So tack on three more for the Bulldogs. Brings the score to 43 to 17 Eagles. And at this point in the game, I'm sure we will see a lot of backup players from Georgia Southern offensively and defensively. It's a good time now to get your second team defense on the field. Get them some experience because they're going to need it in, the in, in this tough Sun Belt Conference. They're going to need as much experience and depth as they can get. No better time than to play these second, third team players now. You're at home. Victory is uh, secured. You know, you're up 43-17 with four minutes left. And, right, and the Sun Belt right now, you got Appalachian State, you got South Alabama, Arkansas State, who's playing Missouri really tough now, Georgia State, Idaho. UL Lafayette, who's been to the last three New Orleans Bowls. Arkansas State, who's been to the last three Go Daddy Bowls. So this conference is not a, not a cakewalk. You're going to have formidable opponents over and over and over again. Now is the time to get depth, experience. Let your second team players play because the game is won by you. Let them get some experience because they're going to need it in the long run. Well, Bellamy elects to bring it out after bobbling the kickoff. Five, May not have been the best Jones. decision instead of getting the ball at the 20-yard line. Instead, Brooklyn it's deep inside their own territory at the 7, rather their own 8-yard line. And that was a mistake Bellamy made. He should have took the knee. At least they would have got the ball at the 20. But when you're behind 43-17, everybody wants to make a play. Everybody wants to be the difference maker. And sometimes you put your team in a bad situation. Well, Western Michigan finished 8-5 and five last year, 6-2. In the MAC, they made it all the way to the famous Potato Idaho Bowl before losing to Air Force. But you think about the turnaround that they've had in the last couple of years. Second best in MAC history as that's in and out of the hands of Carrington Thompson who collected their last touchdown. And Western Michigan will go home and host Murray State on September 19th. Then, oh boy. Go to the national champions at Ohio State on September 26th before starting off their conference schedule in October, taking on Central Michigan. The Ohio State game will certainly be as much character building as Coach Fleck wants. It will be 100,000 fans in Columbus all cheering against them. Um, this is something that they enjoy doing. They, they want to kind of know where his, Coach Fleck want to know where his team is nationally with the, with the FBS teams. 
going into a hostile environment at Ohio State, you're going to learn a lot. What you're going to learn is if you have any players on your team that will quit because the, the, everything is going to be stacked up against you. We know that. The best thing for them to do is to go out and play their very best football. And once again, Chris Delarosa continuing to make noise on the defensive side of the ball. The sophomore linebacker credit him with the sack. And Delarosa was a half a yard away from getting a safety there. You know the. They're keeping the they're keeping the foot on the gas defensively. And the the front seven for Georgia Southerns played a fantastic game. The secondary started out slow, but they matched them. Now a solid defensive performance going into next week. This is what Georgia Southern needed defensively because now they created numerous turnovers for the offense so going into the locker room after this game offensively defensively and special teams they can all stick their chests out a little bit because they all showed up tonight well as great as the defense has been for georgia southern coming up with four turnovers our capital one impact performance you got to give it to matt Breda. 11 carries 100 and 76 yards rather 10 rushes 170 yards and four touchdowns as Brita was all over the field and trust me Matt Brita deserved to get this award he was the tone setter for this game he set the tone with what Georgia Southern needed to do but as a former defensive back I do have to give some love to Mr. Glow. <laughs> Three interceptions tonight. Great job defensively, but that man breeder right there, that young man set the tone for what Georgia Southern needed to do. He was aggressive. He was reading his keys. He was a very patient runner. And when he saw his opportunity to explode through the hole, which is what great backs do over and over and over again, he did it. Great game for Breeder. He needs to wrap this one up, set it down, enjoy it tonight, but next week, come back and do the same thing. And I know that's what Coach is going to talk to him about. Don't get too over it. Enjoy it tonight, but Monday morning, let's get ready to go back to work. So Vegas Harley... And now at quarterback out of Mount Dora, Florida. Florida. You got to love the name Vegas Harley. That's just one of the cool sports names I think I've come across. And it's a really good time to get you back up some experience right now. And Vegas Harley, Redshirt Jr., uh, third team quarterback initially, but he's the backup right now. He needs some experience and put him out there and give him a shot to run that spread offense and see if he can make some noise. Great, great situation Coach Fritz is in right now. Under a minute to go. Harley joined in the backfield by Thomas Banks out of Augusta, Georgia. And these young kids just enjoying being on the field in Paulson Stadium. I mean, they just want to be on the field. You work your butt off during training camp to get to this moment. And whether they play five minutes or two minutes or one minute, this is a special situation for kids that wouldn't normally get a chance to touch the field in Paulson Stadium. This is why they came to Georgia Southern. This is, this is why these kids came, to be able to get on the field and show that I belong. And tonight, the Georgia Southern's offense, Georgia Southern defense and special teams certainly show Western Michigan that the Sun Belt Conference belongs here. That's why we went 8-0 last year. This is what you can expect when you come to Statesboro.
the run up ahead by Jamari Bogan. And that could be the last play of the game, as you mentioned. All cylinders clicking for Georgia Southern. 413 yards on the ground, 420 total. And a big effort in the second quarter, putting up 16 points in a good meeting at center field, or rather in the middle of the field with Willie Fritz and P.J. Fleck. So the Eagles get their first win of the season and hand the Broncos their second loss of this 2015-16 campaign. Now, if you would like to watch the entire game, yeah, make sure you go to watchespn.com or you can always download it, the Watch ESPN app. So Freedom took flight earlier as the Eagles soared past the Western Michigan Broncos for our entire ESPN crew, my partner, and Curtis Bayham, our producers, and all the wonderful staff and camera crew working on tonight's game. We thank you for joining us. This has been a presentation of ESPN. Georgia Southern, 1-1 one one on the season. They walk away with a 43-17 victory here in Paulson Stadium.